Hi, and welcome to this short uh, screencast about um, the updates I've been making in the QGIS plugin builder. So, um, m many of you, if you're building plugins for QGIS, you've probably already used the plugin builder, and you find it under the menu and the uh, plugin builder here. And um, I've been using it to, to m build my own plugins too, but um, I wanted to make some improvements. In particular, the things I'm interested in were um, generating um, plugins which are um, PIP8 and PyLint compliant and that um, use um, Python naming standards and that um, have a test framework already in place when you build the plugin. So I've given the plugin builder a complete overhaul and um, the work I've done is available um, as a, in a, it's in a pull request for uh, the plugin builder repository and I hope it will be applied there. Um, I've also made a test um, plugin that you can play around with if you like. So you can um, add this URL to um, your plugin manager in QGIS. And then um, if you do that, then um, you'll be able to add the new version of the plugin into QGIS. So I'll just show you how that works. So you can see under settings in the pl plugin manager, I've added this uh, new plugin repository, which is just a testing repository. And also take note that I've, um, I've enabled the option to show experimental plugins, because this is an experimental plugin still. Um, so, and the URL that I'm using is plugins.linfinity.com slash plugins.xml. Um, so if you add that um, uh, additional repository to your sources, then you can go and um, search for, probably easiest just to search for builder in the list, and you should see there's a new um, plugin three, plugin builder three. The current version that, that's in uh, the repositories is um, version two, so the my version is the, the rewrite version is version three. So I'm just going to install that plugin. It's not very big, it should just take a second. And um, once it's installed, then you should see in your plugins menu, you've got a new plugin builder. And it's um, set up so that it will work side by side with the existing plugin builder. And the reason I've done that is because pretty much any tutorial out there that uses the plugin builder um, as its basis is probably going to need to be updated before it um, will work with my changed version because I've changed a lot of the names and uh, the workflows. So um, uh, I'm sort of going with a new one that can be installed alongside with the old one. So if you're using an old tutorial, you'll still be able to use it without breaking anything. So let's fire up the new plugin builder. The first thing you notice is that the uh, user interface has been uh, is much cleaner. There's no uh, there's that help file that used to be on the left is not there anymore. Instead, I've put all the um, the the help tips directly into the um, the line edit widgets, um, and also as tooltips. So if you hold your mouse over any um, line edit widget, you'll get a you'll get a, a description saying what you're expected to put into that widget. Um, the procedure for building the actual plugin is more or less the same. The only difference really is that um, we now have this new uh, module name option here. And the purpose of this is um, to give the name for the file that should be, or for the, the base name for the files that should be saved um, when the plugin is generated, because before it used the class name, which created um, a camel cased file name, which is um, not according to the Python standard. So you should use, for modules, you should use an underscore separated um, name. So I'm going to go ahead and make a quick um, dummy plugin. Um, I'm going to use the same um, hints that I've given here. Um, so you can just follow along easily just by copying the text in, the, um, in each dialog. Um, uh, widget, and so in each of the line edit widgets. So this is the name for the plugin, this is a description, and this is the module name now, so this is where we do the underscore um, base name. Okay, 
So now I've got all the basic details. You can fill in this extra stuff as well if you want to. Um, and um, <coughs> then um, if you click OK, you're going to get prompted for the place where the plugin should be built. I'm just going to create it directly in my plugins um, directory. And when you're finished, um, you get a uh, the same kind of result as before. One thing to notice is that you no longer have to build the, the UI files. They're automatically um, created every time you open a uh, open the plugin. So um, the only sort of extra step you still have to do is compiling the resources. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that quickly now, and then we'll um, close QGIS and open it again. We should be able to run our test plugin. So um, this jump into here and I'm going to go into the new directory that was created. You can see the files that were created there. Um, one thing to note is that um, the files now all are using that um, consistent naming, the underscore based module names instead of um, camel case based names and um, you'll see that it's also generated a test directory and uh, given you a script directory. So um, Inside the script directory is um, uh, are a couple of helper scripts. Um, one of them to compile strings, one of them to update your strings, and one of them to set your environment, which we'll use for running tests. So um, let's go ahead and use that script. I'm going to just source it like this. Um, you may not need to use this if you're using a QGIS built from, uh, installed from a binary package. My QGIS is installed under user local um, uh, and then QGIS and then some version number. Uh, so it's in a non-standard place. If you use this script, um, you can give it um, a prefix like local QGIS. Let's say I'm going to build it against 2.2. And so if I do this, then it will basically set my Python path and uh, my QGIS library path and everything. Um, up so that um, I should be able to now run my tests. So if I run make test, um, okay, I just had to set the permissions there um, quickly, but um, so this is something new. You've got a test suite that's um, provided out the box, and I'll show you a little bit more about how the test suite um, works in this um, in this demonstration. Um, and the other thing that it's done is it's also building your um, translation files, and um, we've also got a make target here where we can build the resource file. So um, um, if we do an ls, we should see that there's now um, a resources Python file generated. OK, so let's go ahead and fire up QGIS again and um, have a look and see if our plugin is going to load. OK, so um, I'm just going to go to my plugins menu. And so you see there's the plugin that we've generated and it's available for us to use um, in QGIS. Um, of course the plugin is not doing anything really exciting, it's just giving you the same as what you, you kind of got before in the previous version of the plugin builder, but um, what's really important is under the hood how everything has changed. So I want to go into my um, development environment quickly here and um, sh just give you an idea about uh, how the layout of the plugin has changed. So as I mentioned, um, the, the module, na the file names are all using Python friendly um, syntax. You'll notice that there are no um, PI files matching the UI files anymore because as I mentioned, those are dynamically loaded. And um, you can also, you've got this test directory which I mentioned, which we can now run straight from within our IDE. And um, so we've got a full test suite. And what's really nice about this is that I can go into any um, test, for example here, I can set a breakpoint, so I want to um, stop here, and then I can uh, run my tests in debug mode. And then I get a breakpoint here, and I can stop, and I can look at variable values, I can um, move the execution pointer down one line at a time, and um, 
And so without having to do any work, I've got a working test environment which understands how to bring up QGIS. Um, uh, it sort of um, uses a dummy QGIS um, application in the background, and um, so you don't have to have QGIS running. Um, this does not at all depend on this QGIS instance that I've going in the background here. I can actually demonstrate that, so I'll sh shut QGIS down, and I can rerun the tests, and, um, um, and they should all pass without having QGIS running at all. Um, but this is very useful if you if you're doing um, serious development and you want to and you want to write tests and not have to fire up QGIS every time, load your plugin, load some layers, and so on. We've now got an environment where you can actually do that. So. For example, here I dem demonstrate loading a simple raster file and just checking that it gets uh, the right um, coordinate reference system. Um, other key changes are just in the code itself that gets generated. Everything is um, is uh, pilot and pip8 friendly. So um, every uh, class is a doc string. Every uh, function or method has um, proper uh, descriptive uh, data in the in the doc strings. Um, the, all the boring stuff like not wrapping over 80 lines is done for you and um, and so on and so on. We've actually got some helper tools in here to help you keep your quote code quality up as well. So um, um, you can run make pip8. Um, sorry, I'm just in the wrong um, let me just do it from here. And then you'll see if, if there's any problem, you'll get a report there. I can actually just make a problem quickly and then show you what you would see. So let's say, for example, um, I made this line too long. Something like that. And I go back in here and I run it. You'll see that it tells me that I've, uh, my line is too long and so on. So um, uh, out the box, you've got a way to just check that the quality control is being maintained in your code. And um, it's also everything is already standards compliant from the beginning. In the same way, I've also uh, added a pilot test. So you can do make pilot. And that will also check for pilot violations. And so. Um, uh, again, out the box, you've got a, a starting platform where everything is already neat and tidy. You've got a test framework, and um, you can you can make sure that your code is of good quality. If you um, used to doing things in a cute way, you might find that um, you don't like the way that I'm doing some things in um, in my um, updates to the, the, the plugin builder because. I um, try to make everything as Pythonic as possible um, and to try to hide away the fact that you've got, for example, camel case um, uh, methods and things as much as possible. So if you go and look at any given um, uh, file that I've got here, you'll see that everything is using um, uh, Python naming conventions and even the actual user interface components are all um, using underscore based conventions instead of um, instead of camel case. So if you look at the widgets that I've created in the in the UI file in the UI file, they're all underscore separated names and so on. In some cases um, I couldn't change the names because um, the QGIS API expects um, certain uh, symbol names to be uh, in camel case because it's looking for example for an init GUI uh, method. So um, in those cases, I've left them as they are. Um, but in all other cases, I've, I've moved things into a low case naming. So um, I hope you um, would like to try out my changes. And if you're, if you're building plugins regularly, I think it will make your life a lot easier, especially if you're interested in writing tests and having um, good clean, clean uh, code. And so I invite you to try out what I've been doing and give me any feedback. Um, the best place to give feedback would be to go along to um, to the pull request, which is on um, GitHub. Um, uh, it's under Gary Sherman's um, name, and he's got this plugin builder repository here. And I've got a pull request running against that. Yeah, so it's um, if you just go to Gary Sherman's QGIS plugin builder repository and look at the pull request, then you can go in there and uh, start to give some comments about. Uh, what you think about uh, the changes I've made, whether you like them or not, and so on.
I thank you very much for watching.